Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And this week we now have a yellow Al Ferrari and we need to do something about those wheel arch flares. Alright guys, welcome back. Now, um, this video is actually being filmed um, on the Friday before the colour release has been revealed to all you guys. So, I haven't actually heard your uh, reactions or your hate at me on this colour or anything yet. Um, I'm interested to hear <laughs> what, your, uh, what you guys think about it, how many of you are cancelling me and, and uh, uh, not following the project anymore because I've painted it a colour that you didn't want. But uh, I am really happy. Every time I look over and see this bright yellow engine bay, oh, I really love it. The, um, the yellow fly, the fly yellow from uh, Ferrari, I think is a really cool bright colour. And as you guys know, I really love bright colours. So um, we need to move on to getting ready to paint the rest of this car now. And um, something I haven't touched for quite a while is the wheel arch flares. Basically, I moulded the flares on and I made uh, hidden fasteners on them, but uh, I did that all before I did the final bodywork, and I want these things to fit perfectly, so I need to go back, fit them all up again now, and make sure they're a perfect fit over the entire car, so uh, let's uh, pull out the flares and I'll show you where we are. All right, so um, it was quite some time ago that I actually started working on these flares, and um, as I said, I bought these from a, uh, uh, an aftermarket company and they were very, very poor quality and needed a lot of work to get them uh, decent. And originally they had a, uh, a lip that came up and uh, they're just basically designed for race cars. So they're designed so that the lip comes up and you just put screws in or, or rivets or whatever around the top edge just to uh, uh, hold them on. And I didn't want that. I didn't want um, visible fasteners. I also didn't want to mould the fibreglass to the metal of the car because no matter how well you do it, it will eventually crack. Um, yeah, like uh, there, there are ways you can do it reasonably well so it'll last a while. The trouble is is that particularly out in the sun and things like that, the metal expands and contracts in the sun um, at a different rate to what fibreglass does and you eventually get you know, cracks and I didn't want that. I just want a nice neat seam all the way along the edge and um, as such I, uh, I actually mounted fasteners into the fiberglass um, all the way around so that I can bolt them from the back and uh, actually attach them without uh, you know, visible hardware. That part is done, but uh, they're still rough because I knew I had to get them to this stage and get them on the car, trial them, fit them, and make sure everything works the way they're supposed to. So I'm going to remount these up now and uh, just have a look at how far off they are and how much uh, tweaking they're going to need. I've got the front and the rear on. I made the mistake with the rear. Um, I don't know how I did it, but I had two sets of holes and it seems like I half of the ones that I blocked up were correct and the other half were wrong. The ones down the bottom were more correct and the ones at the top were wrong. So now I've got two sets of holes over the, uh, the whole wheel arch flare, which is a real pain, but um, uh, I will sort that out once I uh, take this off and I'll probably fill those holes with some fiberglass filler. We've got one side on and I'll take you around now and show you how sort of close the fit is, how close it's not and uh, where we're going to start just fine tuning it and getting it just right. So you can see here that I did it, I left it quite rough when I, uh, I did it originally. I haven't got this edge perfect, but uh, again, I'm going, I, I knew I was going to be coming back and getting it just right. And it's reasonably close. There's only a little bit of a gap here, but uh, I'm going to go through now and just get those gaps spot on all the way around. Uh, you can also see the back here. There's a bit of a gap along this edge here, um, which is easy enough to touch up. 
For some reason, I left this hole here, which is actually where the original uh, rear bumper mounts up, and that's going to have to be removed. Um, but the big thing is just down the bottom here, you can see how it doesn't sort of meet up properly. So I'm going to have to shave this and shape it so that it actually uh, lines up the way it's supposed to and, uh, and just blends with the body of the car nicely, which it doesn't right now. On the front, it bolted up fine. I do need to uh, do a little bit of refining on this front little uh, leading edge just to get that just right. And uh, yeah, you can see it's sort of sitting off a little bit here. Um, it's nice and tight all the way over the top. Uh, and then sitting off just a touch, just, just there. Something I, I will uh, touch up there. But this back edge, the issue is, is that uh, I actually have my dry sump oil tank coming in here and the oil return line goes across here into this bit. So you can actually see I've got a, uh, a big cutout of the steel where this goes and that actually had one of the bolting points when I originally did the flare. So what I'm going to have to do is I think I'm going to extend this rear edge of the flare slightly around here and, uh, and bolt it on behind where the uh, dry sump tank goes on to and that will also get me to stick it on because at the moment it also sits out a bit too far and it needs to be pinched onto the car a little bit better. So um, that's this side bolted on anyway. Let's bolt on the other side and see how they are. Okay, and I've got the other ones on now. This uh, this front one actually fits reasonably well. There's a few little tiny gaps, but but overall it's a a pretty good fit. Yeah, you can still see along the top edge here. It uh, needs a little bit more to make that fit nicely, but that one's not too bad. Um, this one here, a couple of the uh, fittings came out when I was trying to get it in, and uh, I also had holes that I had to uh, realign. But uh, I've got that all sorted out now, and it actually sits quite quite nicely onto the, onto the car. So um, again, there's a little bit of a gap, but um, overall, it's not too bad, but it's not perfect. You can see this, this edge is a bit wavy up and down and it's gonna need a little bit of tweaking to get it just right. But before I start doing the filler, I might actually do the uh, actual fiberglass and uh, extend this wing of this front flare just a little bit more so that I can actually uh, um, yeah, bolt it on, because at the moment, it's not fitting. Okay, so I've taken this flare off to do the fiberglassing on the bottom corner of it, and uh, I've actually marked out where the, uh, it's the return for the, uh, from the dry sump tank going back to the engine, where the big dash 20 line goes in, and um, I need to actually trim this part off and that mount that I put in previously is no longer going to work. Now, I have to cut all this stuff off and um, because I really hate working with fiberglass, um, it just makes you really itchy. A trick that uh, somebody uh, told me quite a while ago is actually to stop yourself getting itchy, it's good to use some talcum powder. Cover yourself in talcum powder first uh, and uh, that will actually sort of fill up your pores so you're much less likely to be itchy and scratchy after using the fiberglass. Um, I don't have any talcum powder, but I do have uh, dusty rags around that I used for the uh, body filler. So this is basically <laughs> the same sort of thing. So I'm just covering myself in this stuff so that I don't get all itchy and, uh, and hating fiberglass. So here I'm using a self-tapping screw to hold the flare in place temporarily while I fiberglass it. So now I'm using multiple layers of fiberglass to extend the flare and, uh, and reinforce it where I need it. Alright, well it's a couple of days later and uh, I'm back on the flares and the video has now come out with a colour reveal and uh, I'm happy to say that uh, the overwhelming response is that uh, people are behind the colour, they're happy with the colour, 
uh, they, uh, they're, they're really liking the result. Even a lot of the people who uh, expect it to be red or, or thought it should be red understand my reasonings of why they, I haven't actually painted it red because there's just too many red alphas and it would just be another red alpha. Yellow is still a, uh, a quite historic colour. There are a bunch of people who would have preferred to see it um, yellow ochre, which is the factory alpha colour from the period, which, to be honest, I've never really been a fan of. I like the bright colours. I like the uh, the warmer colour of the uh, the Ferrari. The yellow ochre just seems is a bit dirty for me, and it's just not one that I've really gelled with as much as this bright colour. Uh, it's still a classic Ferrari colour, and this is this is yeah, it's. Every time I walk in and see it, it just jumps out at me and I'm really happy. Um, the silver stripes were a little bit more controversial. There's a really high number that, uh, that really like it, but there are some that, that really don't like it, which I understand, it's not for everyone. This is uh, my thing. It's probably more because it's a little bit more of a, uh, like a home-built signature uh, of mine, you know, similar to what I've done with Harry. I really like it. I think it needs that to top it off. And as I said, I tried it with the Tricolore ones and they didn't really work. Um, so I'm very happy with the silver stripes. I will be painting them on. I won't be using them as a, uh, a, a vinyl. Uh, I want to paint it on like I did with Harry, um, where I'll be painting them and flow coating them so that you will not feel any edge. They'll be nice crisp stripes that are painted in and not, uh, yeah, you, you, you can, you, you'll never feel them. There won't be any raising of the, uh, the paint, which is a lot of extra work, but I think it's worthwhile on something like this. The last thing is that the color of the engine, and particularly the, uh, the inlet plenums, um, there were a lot of people who said I should leave it red. I definitely won't be leaving them red, mostly because um, if, I, if I left them red, I'd have to get a race suit that looks a bit like this. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm not sponsored by McDonald's. It just would not go well like this. Um, they do have red um, engine covers on most of the yellow Ferraris, but that's because they're deep into a matte black engine bay. And if I'd done the engine bay matte black and didn't have the window in the bonnet, then that might be okay. But as it stands, particularly with bright engine, uh, bright yellow engine bay, you open it up with this red engine. It just, I think the yellow is just a really nice um, little nod. It's still a Ferrari color. I've still seen Ferraris with the yellow um, inlet plenums. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I think that will that will just just fit it nicely. There are others saying that I should make them silver to match them with the silver stripes. And again, then they'll basically be just completely silver. They're, they're, because the stripes basically span the width of what the, the plenums are, they'd be pretty much just all silver and the rest of the engine's silver. And I really want them to sort of stand out a little bit more and actually be the feature like they are on the engine as it is. So I think yellow is gonna be the, um, uh, the way to go. So I am, look, I'm very happy with the, the render and, uh, and that's exactly what I'm planning to do on this car is to make it look exactly like the render. So I'm very happy with that, um, that finish. So hopefully um, those of you who enjoy it, there were a few people who were completely written off I'm never watching this channel again because it's not red and uh, that's completely fine. I was never going to keep everybody happy, but, uh, but I'm happy. And to be honest, that's the main thing that matters because it's my car. So, um, all right. Uh, that means it's time to get back onto these flares. And uh, now the fiberglass is all set up. I need to get on and uh, start doing uh, a little bit of fiberglass body filler. And uh, I'll take you down there now and show you what we're doing. So down here, the fiberglass is set up, and as you can see, it's uh, extended this flare out because you could just see a little sliver of my cutout for um, the dry sump oil line. This will now hide it quite nicely, and I just want to build up this edge a little bit with uh, the fiberglass filler just to sort of finish it off, and, uh, and I'll hand mold that and hand shape that after, we, after I peel it off, but I'm gonna put it on now to give it a bit more strength. Um, it is actually uh, got multiple layers of fiberglass on it. It's not super thick, but it's got enough in there that it's wrapped over the top and I also wrapped it underneath. So let's uh, do some fiberglass filler and then we can start look at um, peeling it off and shaping it and getting it the way that will uh, actually suit the look. So a bit of fiberglass filler reinforcement. Now I'm marking out the edge of the flare and loosening it off so that I can get some tape underneath to protect the bodywork while I reinforce the edges. So 
So the fiberglass filler is a nice way to strengthen the edge and extend it to uh, meet the bodywork. And do the same on the other side. Very carefully peeling it off to not damage the edge that I've put on. Alright, so I've gone around, uh, as you saw, I put tape over the join lines and um, bolted these back on and then re-skimmed them all with the fiberglass body filler. Um, it's, it's fiberglass reinforced stuff, so not just the regular body filler, that would chip off very easily. This is a, a lot more robust with the, uh, the fibers in it. Um, I've gone around the whole thing, so now what I've done is um, I actually got one of my sanding blocks and stretched the paper onto it to make it curved and I'm going to go around now and sand the edges so that I get a nice even curve around all of the, um, the pieces and then I need to start looking at sort of what I'm going to do about the, uh, the, the bottom end and trimming the shape and getting this to be a nice pretty shape that uh, flows with what I'm trying to accomplish. So let's do a little bit of sanding and then, um, and then let's start offering up the car and getting our tweaks, our final tweaks just right. All right, so I've gone through now and uh, sanded all of these back, all of the, uh, the edges that I've done, I've sort of tidied them up. They're still not perfect, uh, but what I think I'm gonna do next is, um, is go through and epoxy primer all of these so I can really see the shape of them all and, uh, and really get a, an idea of what I'm working with so then I can build them up from there. All right, well these look much better. Now I actually have uh, them in a solid color. I can sort of, I can, I can see how good the curve is and the shape and, uh, and just get an idea of how they, uh, they, they really need to look. Uh, there are lots of issues because none of them are symmetrical. A lot of them weren't trimmed very well in the mold. So it's all uh, gonna be a challenge to get them to fit just right on this car. Uh, so let's start putting them back on the car now, see what I need to do to refine them and get them um, to be the perfect sort of fit that I'm looking for. All right, I am really loving the look of the car with the flares on it. It, uh, it definitely is uh, bringing it uh, up to scratch. But there's a few things I want to have a look at on this. So um, if you look up close, this fitment is beautiful along here. Um, I need to do the, uh, the final bodywork. You can just sort of see where I added on that uh, extra fiberglass filler there. That needs to be just bodyworked out and make it uh, nice and neat. But uh, overall, the fit is fantastic on this now. But the thing that I'm struggling with is the symmetry of this car. So um, if you have a look, this side here actually sort of curves down. And, uh, and this side here um, stops short. They were different on either side. Um, as I said, they weren't a very high quality part. They were very expensive, but they were not high quality. Um, the other issue I have is on these rears, on both sides, you can sort of see that they dip in, in the middle. I don't know if you can see there. Basically, um, for starters, these were sort of over trimmed a little bit. Like you can see that that's got, that's over trimmed there. They trimmed it far too close in the mold. So the edge is not even all the way around. Um, and also uh, the, they, they actually sit sort of 
they, they're tucked in and um, yeah, it's hard to show along the side, but uh, this needs to be pulled out. So I need to get on, on both sides and have a look at, uh, at that. You can sort of probably see it there quite, quite noticeably that these need to be out. So what I need to do is get a wedge to go inside and then refiberglass from the back and see if we can get them to sit nice and sharp and, uh, and do something about these uh, dodgy edges. So I got in and uh, I added a last layer of fiberglass all the way underneath the, uh, the flare. I let it come down a little bit so that I can actually have a solid structure here that I can then build up on trim and just make it nice and neat. Uh, and I cut out some lengths of timber that I'm using as a brace to brace out the, uh, the flare and hold it into a better shape and get rid of that dip that was in there. So uh, reinforce that, get it looking good. And I did the same on both sides. So you can see here uh, another reinforcing bar. And uh, yeah, that should actually give me a decent shape to work with. So uh, let's move back to the front while this sets up. Alright, so this fiberglass has been left for a while now and it's started to go off. It might be a little bit too far, but one of the big tips with fiberglass is if you can trim it while it's green, it will save you a lot of time and mess later uh, just with a razor blade. So I'm going to go around now and just slice off the excess. Where what? So I'm marking and trimming the front end of these front flares to try and get them to be symmetrical. It is quite a challenge with these extremely poor quality flares. This definitely takes a lot of backwards and forwards tedious work to get them just right. So I've covered the entire flares with some filler just to try and get a very nice, neat, even finish over the whole thing. All right, so I've been working away at trying to get either side uh, of these flares symmetrical and trying to match up. They're not perfect, but I don't think I'm ever going to get them that way. The issue is, is that they're just, they're, obviously molded off of handmade things. They weren't a very good mold in the first place and trying to make them um, exactly the same is very tough to do without remaking them from scratch. Uh, so I, I think I've got them pretty reasonable now. Going down the back, uh, my fiberglass seems to have set quite well. So if I take my little stay out, um, you can actually see now that uh, it's much straighter, it hasn't uh, sunken back in. Same again on the other side, that if I take the, uh, the stay out, this actually still holds its shape. So we are getting there. So the rear still need a little bit of tidying, you know, get this um, edge straight, particularly where they overcut the, uh, the flare here, so it actually doesn't have an even lip all the way around. So where I've repaired it here, I've now got a good solid base that I can start building it up and get that just nice and neat. Yeah, definitely not a, uh, a bolt-on solution, that's for sure.
All right, so I'm happy with the shape of the flares now and just doing the final revisions um, sort of off the car. The shape on the car is good. The issue I have now is I have these extra holes, which I do not want extra holes in the body of the car. I would like to weld them up. The trouble is, is that I don't want to weld them because I've done all this body work. It's potentially going to warp everything and just make everything um, hideous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, uh, the fiberglass filler to, uh, to, to plug these, just the extra holes that I've got uh, around here so that they're not going to be an issue later on. Um, no, it is not. As I said, I would much prefer to weld it, but I don't want to have to go through and do all the bodywork again. It's only on this one guard. The other guards are all good. It's just this one that had the extra holes. So um, as always, keeping it real, like this is stuff that I'm not super happy about, but um, I'm going to fix it the best that's worth doing for uh, this stage without going back and redoing all the bodywork again on the back here and then re-high filling it and just like... No. <laughs>I spent a lot of time trying to keep the front end symmetrical either side. This side does actually wrap around further than the other side. They're just so far off of each other. It's the closest I could get it to make them still appear to have the same sort of curve and shape on both sides to sort of at least balance reasonably well. Hey guys, in 1976, Ferrari updated its 365 GT4 BB with the new BB 512. This resurrected the name of the earlier Ferrari 512 race car. It referred to the car's new 5-litre 12-cylinder engine instead of in the 365 where it was the cc's of an individual cylinder. This new 5-litre flat 12 was down to about 20 horsepower from its predecessor's 380 horsepower. It looked largely the same except for some wider rear tyres and some minor body mods. In 1981, the carbies were replaced with CIS fuel injection. In 1974, the North American racing team developed a 365 GT4 BB to replace its Daytona racing car. By 1978, Ferrari began their own race variant of the BB 512 called the BBLM. These cars had fixed headlights replacing their pop-ups and a fixed rear wing taken from the Formula One race cars. These cars pushed the flat 12 to 440 horsepower and over the next few years that grew to 470 horsepower. The BBLMs were not overly successful but the highlight was a fifth overall and class win at the 1981 24 Hours of Le Mans. All right, so uh, that was as always, it's so much more work than I expected getting those flares right. But um, I tell you what, every time I walk back into this garage, this color really hits me in the face and I am, I am, I am really loving it. It's so good to finally see some color on the car, even if it's covered in runs and stuff, which I will uh, demonstrate how I cut them out and things like that later. Yes, there's uh, orange peel and the runs and stuff, but that'll all get tidied up and be nice and shiny and fixed up later. It's a very joyful colour. It is. It is. Like, you feel happy when you see it. Yes. Yeah. And the flares are looking really good. I know um, there's, there's sort of controversial in the fact that the front and rears are very different, but that's actually what they were in period. Um, and even though I suppose this car is not traditional, like, yeah, I, I, they've, they've grown on me and, uh, and I actually uh, uh, don't mind it. So uh, mm. it'll get there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's looking a lot better. No, I love it. Anyway, like and subscribe, let Jeff know what you think, he likes reading your comments. If you want to watch him a day earlier with no ads, follow him on Patreon. And um, 
think that's everything. Yeah. Hmm. Quite you, cold you, today. You, I didn't do, do many bloopers. No, I was um, extremely focused. Too today. well today. I, like, yeah, I had a. <laughs> I, I needed to mess up more to add the bloopers. Normally at the it end. takes me ages because you just <laughs> give me the facts to read and then I have to decipher your handwriting and I've never seen it before and it's all new knowledge. But today it was. I'll dig. I'll get something going. Touch wood. Uh, yeah. Just seamless. Well. I won't go that far. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye. It referred to the car's new five litre, where it referred to the individual cylinder. No, no, look at 380 horsepower. But looked what, is that right? A 365 GT4 BB to replace its Daytona racing car. Daytona?